All right, everybody, Stocks by the Numbers, welcome back. Coming to you again after hours here. It's almost 6 o'clock, but everyone has been pretty pumped about what we're seeing, not only throughout the day today, but, of course, the extra high that we just hit here after hours on SoundHound AI, ticker symbol S-O-U-N, listed here on the NASDAQ. Stock closed to $8.65, up one three-quarters of a point, almost 25% move on the day. After rallying, I think it was 16 17% yesterday as well. We can see after hours, the stock's still up over a full point, over 12% currently at 9 70 968 hit a double top recently of 10 and a half even and now we have to go back to day one really we have to go back to day one and if we look at some of these candles we can see not only the key pivot points that we just broke above in the high eights but also the 10 points and the potential 12 points that could be coming soon if uh, the FOMO continues and volume keeps coming into this stock now tomorrow as well. We could potentially see the 12s, and we can see, in my opinion, and we can see here at the open here on this candle, 872, right? Open, 872. High today, 873, and then pulled back a couple of cents. Look at the high on this candle, 1080. Stock hit 10 and a half twice, right? We come back here as well. Obviously, the stock got above this level uh, before market closed, but you can see 849. 849 seemed like a pretty key level, and the stock chunked up above it a little bit and, of course, hit highs of 870. Now here we get into the 12s, right? Because we had the big run up here, as you see, back above 18, which potentially the stock could hit here in the short term if everything continues the way it's moving. But I think, in my opinion, conservatively, like this 12 and change level right here, because it's right near the, the high and the low here. And you can see the high 1238, and you can see the low 1245. So right there, like 1240. What's the low here on this one? 1256. So yeah, right here in my opinion, maybe like 1245, 12 and a half and change. That could potentially be the next stop. But I'm just showing you guys like the opens and the closes and the highs on some of these candles right out of the gate that are showing us why we're getting to these levels and again not only getting to the high eights but of course breaking through and seeing where we can go afterwards right because technically the stock isn't back at highs yet so we're not in that quote-unquote uncharted waters territory yet so we could potentially see where this stock is going for us but even looking here at this candle, you can see open 1093, low 1054, right? We hit 10 and a half again today. And you can see, this is why we're bouncing around the, the, the 10 range. Well, we were anyway. Now we're dropping back down sub 9.5. But you can see the low 1011, the, the close here on this candle, 1035, right? So we can see why we have a lot of action in the first half of the 10, so to speak, before we pull back. Even this candle here, you can see the open 1046, stock at 10.5. Look at the low 888, the close 894, right? So that's why the stock, in my opinion, was kind of hanging out around those high eights and then just exploded higher and started running like crazy. And a lot of people may not have understood why. But you can see, look at the high on this candle here, going all the way back to June 1st of 2022. High on this candle, 873. Dropped down hard, ran up and peaked at 873, and then began to sell off and drop hard and chunk down. So now we went right back to those highs before market close hitting new 52 week highs of 873 and now of course we're chunking down i'm sure anyone who bought this just a few days ago at seven obviously looked after hours and saw they were up 40 to 50 percent so i can appreciate the fact that a lot of people are hitting the sell button and securing profits and hoping that the stock falls back down to earth a little bit and becomes attractive again in price so that they can pile the profits back in and go long again but in my opinion, man, I, I knew the whole time that I was reviewing this stock that this was going to happen. And the only person that should be very upset right now is yours truly, because I personally did not have the liquidity on hand, even though I knew almost for a fact. Again, nothing's guaranteed, but this was as close to, an, to a guarantee as, as we could have gotten, in my opinion. And this is why I was doing updates, I think, like every three or four weeks, going all the way back to like here. So I've been looking at keeping an eye on and updating everyone on this stock just giving my personal opinion every month for about the last 12 months and the, every time someone asked me oh it just broke you know it, it's it's going down well, what should i do what do you think is it going to hold like this is why i always say with these situations with these long-term growth and these long-term these longer term explosion potentials right i know it's all happening quickly in the last couple of weeks but this 
was bouncing around, right? In my opinion, this was your opportunity, especially down here in these two consolidation zones here. When we hit the low twos and then broke below two, everyone was like, oh, it's taking so long. What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And this is why I always say, in my opinion, you should accumulate shares over time. You should build a position and catch the explosive hundreds and thousands of percentage gain returns over time. And when the stocks dip down like this, but we have high conviction that we have a grower, we have a winner on our hands here, you do not get upset, in my opinion. This is what I said in a, in a recent video. I think everyone has just negative mentality when it comes to these situations. And when we're trending downward like this in these consolidation zones here, you should be thankful. You should be saying thank you so much because I originally bought it up here before it broke the trend line at 345 and now it's down here at 187. Thank you so much. I can now lower my cost basis. You know, I'm probably down into like the mid high twos now. And, you know, if I have money over the next month or two and it dips down again, I'm going to try to add to the position when I can. Then you turn around, you know, three, four months later. Oh, my God, it's back down at 180. Where's it going? Oh, my God, it just broke 170. OK, I'm going to buy more shares, build my position bring my cost basis down, right? This is what I always say. In my opinion, you should view this as an opportunity. You should not view this as a negative or as a situation where, oh, let's go back to the drawing board and, and see if we have to change our strategy. If we know we have a winner and we have a grower, then again, the goal should be to accumulate as many shares as possible and build a position over time when the market gives us these opportunities. And now you can see recently, again, the stock exploded. News came out with NVIDIA. Technicals lining up. Boom. Broke above resistance. Boom. Now we're hitting, again, those highs back on those candles from uh, when the company went public. But we can see here also, again, like the next, uh, yeah, the next level here. See on, wait, this high, yeah, 1080. But we can see we opened at 1220. We hit a high 1238. And no, it was here. You can see the low 1245. And you can see the low right there, 1256. Right? So that's why, in my opinion, I think we could potentially hit like around this 12 and a half mark if we do go up even more. But again, we have really rallied. So if at any moment the stock really begins to chunk down and sell back off and start giving it a, giving it back a little bit, you know, in all seriousness, you, you really can't get that upset right so we we do occasionally have to keep it realistic and even if stocks are doing nice great big things you know they have to have red days sometimes so don't get upset but i also wanted to give some credit to godspeed 4444 in the discord who mentioned a couple of weeks ago about some key levels to watch on soundhound as well and also mentioned uh, where it could possibly go if it holds these levels. So, uh, like I said, I, I you know doing this, I always put my pride in my back pocket. I always have an open mind. And if someone adds something to a situation, you know, I'm, I'm always gonna give them a call out, a shout out, and mention them in the video. So, Godspeed four four forty four. He says saw so, quote nine point six on the two sixty one point eight percent extension on a larger time frame. It shows around nine fifty two. Also mentioned that, which we, the level we got above uh, here, let me take this off because it's throwing me off a little bit, but also mentioned, yeah, this point that we got above here, mentioned that in his opinion on his screen, his short-term support that he was seeing was 735, and he said if it holds, next stop, 961. And you can see, obviously, you know, the stock has been bouncing around, but we hit a couple of these points and bounced off a few of these levels that he mentioned to us in the Discord. Again, in my opinion, we have a really, really great community building in the Discord. A lot of good people, a lot of, uh, a lot of additions to some analysis that we're looking at, a lot of updates that people keep an eye on, try to post news articles where we see them, when we get them. So, again... Wanted to give credit where credit's due. I always do. Shout out to Godspeed. Again, good calls, brother. Keep the uh, technical analysis going. Stay sharp. 
But SoundHound on stock charts here, we can see as well, we had our next resistance level on the daily, our pivot points. We can see our next resistance level, 968. And uh, that's where the stock was hanging out for a while. You can see right around here, a lot of bounces breaking below, getting back above, bouncing along. We had the pop, we had the drop right back to that level, bouncing off of breaking through, right? Retesting, now we're rejecting and going down. So that obviously appears to be a very key pivot point for us now, 968. So we have to see how the stock holds up in the next couple of hours. And of course, how it looks pre-market as well, because we could wake up and before markets open, we can be up here at this next level of 1194. So we know anything can happen. But of course, the RSI did get high here on the daily at almost 76. However, recently, it has been well above that benchmark as people are climbing in and we have the FOMO setting in. So the RSI really cannot, in my opinion, be one of your leading indicators in this situation. And I mentioned that the MACD was potentially crossing and, and but flattened out and we could potentially bounce or, or break through. And again, as you see, the last couple of days, the stock has been up. So it obviously bounced off and went higher. On the weekly now as well, we have the RSI up here north of 86 and a quarter, in my opinion, really still can't be a big indicator. What is this line right here? This old resistance level here, this is what, 1297 we'll call it, about 13. So this is why I'm saying, in my opinion, if we really do continue to pump this stock the, at the rate at which we are, then the next stop technically should be, like I said, in my opinion, about 12 and a half to maybe back around this point of about 13, potentially low 13s. And of course, we have to see if, you know, NVIDIA, I don't know, mentions them or you know, whatever, at this event coming up. I have no idea, but obviously we'll uh, take that one day at a time as we hear about these things. But SoundHound AI, again, I just have to drive home. This is why, in my opinion, I personally like to find these companies that are flying underneath the radar, that are, you know, slowly expanding their business, slowly building up the revenue, and also it happened to be an AI company, right? It happened to be just in, in that space at the right time when all of these AI stocks are taken off and all of this, uh, I feel, new young money is coming in and everyone is now simply just buying tech names and, and every AI stock out there under the sun because people are forecasting, you know, four or five years from now, these stocks are going to be some of the biggest names and the biggest players in the AI space. So everyone now wants to get in here at the ground level and now ride that wave over the next couple of years and if you missed out on soundhound i mean you know you're asking me up here nine and a half ten dollars you know is it worth getting in again over the very long term and i say that because we just ran so much right so if we pull back down here to the threes and then you know we can slowly climb this back to nine but we can do it over the next 12 to 18 months right because this technically was a lot of growth for a company that again look at this market cap here back approaching three billion i mean you know we're growing but you, you, you know what i'm saying now the valuation may have exceeded the the realistic business itself and that's why i'm saying we could at any moment begin to sell off and in my opinion you you it really shouldn't blindside you so to speak but um you, you know, if, if you missed out on it and, and you want to be a part of it and, and you just want to start buying and piecing your way in here, you know, it's, it's not the worst idea. And then, of course, if it does happen to pull down and sell off hard and all of a sudden it's back in like the sevens and the sixes, well, hey, if you originally bought it at nine and a half and you know wanted to hold it for years and were confident in the growth then like i always say if you liked it at nine and a half you should love it at six and a half you should love it at five and a half and like i said if you find yourself in that position think about the people back here in this position when it was hitting these these highs up here at the fours and then again you had the bounce and and maybe you bought here at three and a half 380 and then it broke and, and it completely chunked down and, and you were immediately down 50 percent over the next couple of months like if you buy in here at 10 and then we pull back to five this is why i'm saying in my opinion i personally wouldn't view that as a massive negative 
I would view that as an opportunity because if I missed out on it and it had a big run and I bought high and bought a little early, when it does come down and have those dips, I would try to get some liquidity together in my opinion and I would try to add to the position, bring down my cost and over time accumulate shares and build a position for the explosion that hopefully continues going for all you guys and uh, continues well into the future over the next couple of years. But yeah, I, I personally, I, I knew, I knew. Like I said, I don't want to say it like that because I don't want to mislead anyone. But, you know, that, that's why I always say, in my opinion, I feel, right? They're, like I, I use these terms purposely because again, this is just my opinion when I look at these stocks. I like to analyze stocks. I love stocks. And, you know, I just started making these videos of me looking at stocks. So if I happen to be more right than wrong and people see the videos and kind of agree with what I'm saying and then they take a shot and it works out, you know, again, fantastic. More power to you guys. But uh, again, this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion when I look at these situations. But in my opinion, this was basically a guaranteed winner in my eyes. And we know anything can happen. But in, in my opinion, like this whole time, like it was down here and it broke into the low twos and people are asking, oh, it's at 170, it's at 150, what, what's going on? What do you think? I felt like saying like, man, shut up and buy. And now you see why. So again, there's a lot of YouTubers out there. People just try to do random, useless, uninformative updates on whatever stocks are trending. Some people, again, just try to do like these useless videos looking at just like a few stocks that they own and talking to you about them, right? Uh, other people, again, with, with some of these updates, just not really giving you any direction or, or even their own prediction or how they feel about it. And then, uh, you know, they're just pumping out videos just to do it. And I always said, in my opinion, I would only put up a video if, if I really had something to say. And I, and I wouldn't pollute the channel with nonsense. And I would try to really not waste your, your guys' time with, you know, with just these nonsensical videos. Just trying to, you know, pump up the channel and help out the algorithm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, that's why I uh, personally stayed with Soundhound. Because some people mentioned it and, you know, voice AI and they were interested in it. And like I said, I saw I saw the growing revenue. I saw the fact that every time we would update the stock, they would sign a new client, a new fast food franchise. And then that's it. The news from NVIDIA happened. And look, and remember, this whole time the company missed on revenue. It's just incredible. So uh, shout out to all you shareholders. I am so, so happy for all of you. And uh, hopefully this is just the beginning, you know, and we'll end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that these markets are rocky, they're volatile, they're very uncertain, so I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. You guys have a good day.